Hello my friends and welcome back to my painting channel and in this painting video, in this painting session, I'm going to be painting a corn blood spawn for the Blood Bowl game. So this is one of the new Games Workshop um, corn players for Blood Bowl and this is a rather beastly kind of character. This is quite a large uh, resin uh, model and this is uh, from the uh, Forge World web store, so this is quite a big resin guy. And we're going to try to paint this guy up with some really, really sort of like corn red, dark and sort of um, dark but also vibrant sort of colours and things like that. So we're going to try to use a, a red skin tone on this guy. So we're going to start out with doing the red skin tone. Um, I always like to start with the skin, and with a model like this where the skin is such a big focus point, you want to try and get the skin looking really, really good because this is the part that people are going to notice the most. So I'm starting on this one with a burnt red, so this is a dark, dark red, this is quite, um, uh, th th this is like a really sort of like um, dark crimson, it's a really good sort of base colour. Now as you notice I've got quite a nice thin layer of this burnt red, this sort of like really dark crimson colour that I'm using as the base. And I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to cover all of the uh, the skin areas with this particular colour. You don't need to be too extreme or too precise or too accurate because you're going to tidy a lot up. But ideally, uh, when I'm painting, the more precise, the more sort of like safe you can be when you're painting, first of all, the better because you don't kind of want to paint too much on other areas because you don't want to cover over loads and loads and loads of layers. You want to try and be quite, quite clean with your painting and, and, and quite precise to begin with because then that's less work for you later. But as I say, you don't have to be. Um, you can paint however you like. As long as you're using sort of thinner layers, so watered down paints or uh, like a flow improver, I use a flow improver quite often, uh, then this will allow your paint to, to go into those grooves and into some of the areas a little bit better. It allows the paint to move on the brush better, so it sticks to the miniature better as well. It's also brilliant for things like um, mixing and sort of like multiple layers so that you can mix colors and highlights and tones. So having a, a thin down paint is great. So once we've got the burnt red sort of um, base colour dry, I'm just going to go around and pick out all of the little horns and things that um, that he's got on him here. He's got quite a lot of little like horns and things growing out of him. Um, and I'm going to paint these in sort of like a dark grey colour. So these are going in a heavy charcoal. Uh, and the reason why I'm painting these a dark grey rather than like a bone white or a bone type of colour um, is because I was looking at sort of the artwork um, and the box art. And in the box art he does have quite a lot of sort of like dark colours um, surrounding like the horns and bits like that. But I don't like to paint things down a straight sort of path of like black or too dark anyway. So what I wanted to try and do with this guy is paint him so that he has dark horns, but something that separates it from uh, the, the, the dark red that we're using, um, but without it being sort of like black and, and too extreme. So we're trying to use this as like a little bit of a, uh, not like a lighter color, but just something that takes your eye off that red in little areas as well. You could be precise with this part now because we're gonna just go, uh, once we've painted all of these little sort of like um, breaks and horns and things like that, um, we're gonna pick out one or two other parts before we sort of put the wash on to the skin. Um, one of those parts here, as you can see, is we're just gonna paint these veins. So painting these veins, we're also sticking with a sort of reddy color, but this is a violet red. So this is sort of like a, a reddish purple color. And this should allow those veins to stand out off the red. Uh, but without the colour being too over the top, so without going to like an extreme purple or anything like that. We're trying to tie these colours together so that it looks a little bit more natural, a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more sort of like unified then with the colour in. So that's the violet red that we're going to do, we're just going to use that across the, uh, the, the veins on him, not just across his arm, but just across his feet here as well, because he's got a few veins that pop out across him where, where he's like sort of hulking out and, and going crazy. So once we've done that, we're just going to add the wash. This is one of my favourite bits because this then in turn picks out and shows you all of the detail on the miniature. For this one, I'm using a purple tone from the Army Painter. Again, if you're not an Army Painter fan with washes, you can use something like a Citadel if you want. Um, a droogy violet would be equally as good. And pretty much by using a purple tone rather than a red tone, um, this will allow you to get a, a much darker feel out of those areas where you can see the, um, the symbols and in those creases in the groove. So this is going to be um, quite dark, but also being purple is going to tie that colour together. Don't worry about going over the charcoal. You can go over the charcoal as well with this because, again, it's just about tying those colours together. And because we've used a violet red on those veins, it's going to tie the purple and the red colours 
colors together a little bit more and make them a bit more unified. So this is kind of like um, the perfect sort of color that I found for doing the red, uh, for doing the skin and for getting the most out of the, the, the vibrancy. Because once this dries and it's got um, real darker spots sort of in the, uh, the creases, then we're gonna go back to the original tone. So we're just gonna go back to the burnt red. Now I've sped this up quite a bit because this uh, is, is probably the most time consuming part of the model of the miniature. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build those colors up gradually. So you're going back to that burnt red, back to the base color, and just using the very, very sort of like, um, the very, very tip of the brush. As you can see, I'm using very fine brush strokes just to build the, the tone and build sort of the muscle structure out of it. Now, with this particular model, he has a lot of muscle and there's a lot of definition to the muscle and the sculpt is excellent for showing off where to paint. So this is kind of like a little bit of a painted by numbers because that's all we're doing is painting those thin, thin layers, those thin brush strokes across the areas that are sticking out the most while we avoid where that purple is sat. And this is where that purple is showing its um, showing its worth because you can see how dark and where that's sitting just in those creases and in those grooves and that's given us the ability to build this color back up. So we're going to build this up in a few different stages to get it to be a little bit warmer, a little bit brighter and a little bit more vibrant. But at the moment we're just going through that burnt red. And the reason why it takes a lot of time is because there's so much skin on this model. You want to go around and take your time and patience is the key with this. Because if you rush this and just put blobs here, there and everywhere, it's not going to look as good. Um, and with a model like this and something that's going to be the centre of your, um, your, your sort of like table or the centre of your game, you want to really spend the time to make it look as good as possible. So once the burnt red is done, just want to go in then and use a plain red. So this is this is just called red. So this is quite a flat color and this is quite a good mid tone. I use this quite often for different kinds of colors and then I build up from there. But because this corn uh, blood spawn is quite um, like dark skin tones normally, they use a lot of dark reds, I've decided to use this as my middle color rather than my base color. And pretty much because this is thin tones and because this is thin um, layers of paint, you build in that color up in stages. As you can see, I'm just going around, leaving the area where the, the shade is, has, has left, and also leaving some of the area where the base color, the burnt red, has left as well. And once we've done that, that, that sort of um, mid tone, sort of flat red, then I'm just going in and I'm going to do the same thing again. Um, I'm just trying to pick up on the more extreme sort of areas. I have to excuse my camera shutter is just flickering a little bit between the light and the dark area when I uh, block out the light. So just bear with that, I'm sorry. Um, and we're using a carmine red for this. And again, I'm using this really thin because what this is going to do is this is going to allow some of that darker color underneath, although it doesn't look like it when it's wet, to show through when it dries. This color is quite thin originally anyway, so by using a flow improver to thin this down, essentially what we're doing is we, we, we allowing the color underneath to show through and then add in a bit of vibrancy to it. And this is gonna build that tone, build that color and build that sort of um, that vibrant red that we really want, that sort of like hulking red that we're trying to go for. And again, as you see, I'm just using the very tip of my brush. Not worried about filling the whole area. I don't mind leaving little lines and brush strokes here and there because it's adding to that muscle definition and that muscle tone as well. So by doing so, you're creating more depth in your model, creating more depth in your miniature. And as you can see, you can see the difference now between the sort of burnt red and red just up on the shoulders here in comparison to where the carmine red is hidden on his back. So you can kind of see that color difference and that color tone showing through. And again, you want to kind of go around the whole area of the skin. So it is quite time consuming, I know, but it will be worth it in the end. Now, once that carmine red is dry, again, using thin layers and using a thin color again, what I've done is I've mixed a little bit of bloody red into the carmine red. Now, bloody red is one of my favorite colors to highlight with, but I didn't want to go straight to bloody red because it might just be a bit too extreme, a bit too garish and a bit too over the top. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing this in with the carmine red so that this gives a nice little color boost. As you can see, the vibrancy already is popping. This is looking really, really good. When this dries, it's gonna subtly tone itself into the carmine red underneath. 
So again, we're not going from a really dark to a really extreme red. And by building these layers and these tones and these textures up, we're actually going to get ourselves a really, really vibrant, um, really sort of like awesome looking red skin tone. So again, it's time consuming. I know it takes time. Patience is the key, as I said at the beginning, but just don't give up. Keep on and keep on and keep on going. Do it in stages and things like that if you need to. So that's pretty much the skin done. I'm not going to do any more to the skin than that. Uh, once you've got all of those layers done, that's pretty much it. I'm happy with that. It will look amazing when the model is finished. So I'm going to go on now and paint the rest of the details. And by painting the rest of the details, it's mostly the hardest part is just painting all of the details in. So we've got to pick them all out one by one by one by one. So I'm going to paint the chains in a silver. So for that, I'm using a, a gun metal. I mean, if you're a Citadel uh, fan, you can use things like lead belcher and things like that, because that's going to be the same sort of thing. It's kind of like a darker silver to begin, because we can highlight it further later. Uh, then on his uh, trousers, which he only has one of because one of his legs is turning into a bit of a uh, beast mode area. So I'm just painting this in a very, very dark grey. Uh, this is, I'm using a German grey for. And again, that's so that I don't paint too much in black because I don't want to lose any detail. And I want to build and highlight from there anyway. So just want to be careful with this one. Um, there's quite a lot of fiddly details around the legs. Um, and this is probably one of the areas that I found not the most difficult, but the most time consuming when we were building the colors back up is because there's a lot of detail in quite a small area around this part. So once the German gray is done and the trousers are finished, then you want to go around and just make sure to paint all of those leather straps. So for me, uh, if you follow any of my other videos, you'll know that I like using a dark rust color, which is a very, very dark brown. Uh, this is a almost an uh, exact replica of Citadel's Dryad Bark. And I know a lot of people use things like Rhinox Hide as well as a good base, you know, really dark sort of base color. Uh, any of those would be absolutely fine. You can use any color that you, you, you prefer for a dark brown. Um, it's just the dark rust out of the, the, the dropper bottles is just my go-to paint. It's the one that I use the most. That doesn't mean that it's the best, it just means that it's my favorite. Um, so yeah, take your time with this, especially around the small arm. The small arm is quite fiddly because of the positioning of the model and the size of the miniature. It can be quite difficult to get into those hard to reach areas. Um, again, patience is the key. Try not to get any of the brown on the skin because we've worked so hard on that skin, we don't want to mess up on um, some of our layers and some of our areas and colors that we're using now. Now for the armor plates, um, this was a really bit of a difficult one for me because I was kind of thinking, I want this to be red, but I don't want this to just tie into the rest of the model. So you want to try and use a red that's a little bit different. So I'm using a uh, gory red for this from Vallejo. And this one is kind of like a candy red because when this dries, it actually dries quite shiny. So it's got kind of a, almost like a textured, um, uh, like a special effects kind of paint this is. So when this dries and it dries quite shiny, this will turn into like a candy red kind of color, which will allow it to stand off from his skin tone, giving you a little bit more of a depth because you don't want to paint the, the arm in the same color and then end up with everything looking the same. So you're just trying to mix things up and break up that, that red. And from there, I'm just painting around the, uh, the edges. So just across the armored areas, uh, using a brassy brass. Um, you can use a scorpion brass again if you're a Citadel user. Um, any brass will, will do for this. Um, you don't really have to do too much to the brass. The brass is quite easy and it looks good anyway. Um, I'm a fan with these sorts of things of using a true metallic metal um, because they have a good thickness, a good coverage. Um, they're easy to manipulate, um, that sort of thing. So again, Quite simple, nice and easy. The hardest thing I found was just going across things like with Gauntlet, and of course he's got a shin guard that is quite similar. Um, and the reason why I painted the red first, as you can see, the red is actually inside of the brass. So you don't want to paint the brass first, then try and get your red inside of it, because that's just, that would be a nightmare. So just try to put your gory red on, or the red tone that you're using for the armor on first, before going in and using then sort of the brass around the area and getting the details in from that. I'm going to do the same on a few parts of him, so obviously his armor area, the helmet as well as you can see, the, the helmet panels just across the top, now I've used the gory red so I'm using that sort of like candy style red just across the top area there and then I'm using the brass on the sides and the spikes just to sort of um, tie in those colors and just give them a little bit of something else to look at because you don't want the whole helmet to be bright red on red skin, it breaks that red up then so that's kind of what we're looking for. 
He's got a few skulls and things on him as well, just sat across his belt. So I'm painting those in my uh, favorite sort of uh, cream color, which is bone white. This is a great sort of base color to uh, to base things like skulls and bones and skeletons and things like that. I'm also doing the teeth on his face, uh, which is a real fiddly job. Um, I'm also painting those in the same color, I'm just using the, uh, the bone white. And again, that's just about separation. It's just about giving you something else to look at on his face. So instead of painting the teeth the same color as I've made the horns and things, I'm using a bone white so that that means that the teeth stand out and are brighter, bringing your eye to them in a little bit more of a natural way. Now for the towel and his little tabard or whatever this is, this little bit of cloth that's just stuck across his huge chest here, um, I'm using just a, a, a plain flat khaki colour. And again, if you use Citadel, Zandri Dust would be equally as good. So any kind of khaki colour and this will give you a nice different tone. And again, it's about breaking those colours up, see? So we don't want to go too extreme, too over the top, but it's just about giving you something else to look at on the miniature that isn't red or grey or black, you know, that sort of thing. And for the helmet that he's stolen, his little trophy helmet here, I'm painting this in blue, so I'm using a medium blue, um, just to kind of, again, break up those colours and add a little bit more to the miniature, a little bit more of a story as to, this is one of the trophies, this is one of the guys that he's beaten up on the Blood Bowl pitch, and he's pinched his helmet. From there, then, I'm just going back to the gun mantle, and I'm just tidying up a few things here before we use a wash again. So, I'm just tidying up across the blue helmet here, but I'm also going to use this to do a few things like um, catch on some of the, um, the little buckles across the leather straps. So the leather straps that we've painted and we're quite happy with the way that they are, I'm just going to use that gun metal to go around the buckles as you can see. Now the buckles are quite fiddly, don't be too worried um, if you make a little mistake. This is why we're using these layers first before the wash and then the wash will sort of like tie these in. I'm using this for the studs on the bottom of the shoe as well. Um, and I'm just trying to sort of like tie some of these colors in to, to make, uh, again, like I say, just breaking up little bits so it gives your eyes something to look at. There's more detail on this than just a few leather straps because they've got the buckles and all these different bits. Again, with that, try to be very careful around the small arm because there are buckles in and around there and it is very, very fiddly. I found that very difficult to get into. Um, so just take your time with that area. From there then I'm just using uh, Citadel's Null Nile, which is a nice black wash. Um, I know a lot of people really, really love Null Nile, um, and I can see why. It's one of my favorite washes. I do tend to use mixed uh, brands when I paint, so uh, this is why I try to give you options with Citadel as well as while I'm using Vallejo and things like that. Um, someone once said to me that um, to be a good painter, you'll use all different paints and all different brands. It's not just about picking one and sticking with it. Um, and I have to agree, all different brands will offer you different paints and different um, washes and things like that that you might find you prefer to others and again that doesn't mean that they better it just means that you will have your own preferred style of painting so for this one I'm using the Null Nile. Null Nile is great, it's quite watery, it's quite wet, so this moves around the miniature really good. It's actually good to manipulate around some of the harder to reach areas as well. And it's also great to manipulate in little places like this where you don't want to get that black uh, wash onto the skin because you can use just the tip of your brush and just gently brush this into the area and you'll find that the wateriness and the texture of the wash will sit into the recess points without um, dripping off or going too far around the model. The thing to remember with this um, is because we've done so much work on that uh, skin that we don't want to lose the details is to just be careful not to pull too much. So be careful not to put too much wash on your brush because if this washes off onto the uh, skin that we've done we don't want to ruin all of our hard work. So it's all about manipulating the wash rather than worrying about putting too, like loads on at a time. Again, patience is key. It's just about taking your time and building these things up, building these stages up. Just being careful, trying to put that wash across the, uh, the straps as well, the leather straps, but again, without getting too much of that on the red skin. So once that is dry, we're gonna look at and focus on trying to build those colors back up so that we can get the vibrancy back to match that skin so that this model looks awesome. 
So we're going back to the base colour of the trousers and we're using the German grey. And we're just building up, leaving some of the areas where that black has sat. So we're just going to try to use uh, picking up on the folds and all of the areas of the trousers that are bunched up, um, some of the creases and things like that. So that again, that gives us depth in the um, in the folds, but at the same time, all of those raised areas then are going to look a lot, a lot lighter. And what we're doing is, once we've done the base coat, we're then just going to mix a little bit of white into it just to get a little bit more vibrancy. So I'm using a dead white. Um, you can use just a normal plain white and you can use any white to, to mix your colours and build your colours up. Mixing your colours to get highlights out of them is a really, really good skill to have. And with this one I've used probably about a 70-30, so that's 70% of the original colour. Added a little bit, so just 30% of the highlight colour. Um, what I'm going to try and do is just paint up here again and just pick on the highest raised areas so that this creates more of the, um, the depth that we find through those folds in the cloth. And as I was saying earlier, mixing colours to create your own highlights is definitely a skill that you should learn if you're painting. If you're not familiar with it, sit down with old miniatures, mix your paints together, see what works best for yourself. Now once you've done that first highlight, I'm just using another highlight and this time I'm using a 50-50 so this creates a much lighter highlight out of that German grey. And that's all I'm doing with this as you can see, I'm using the very 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 tip of the brush and I'm trying my best here just to paint very fine thin lines to create sort of um, folds or create like little areas where the light is just catching his trousers and just catching on those areas that are poking out the most. And because of that then what we're going to get is a nice depth and a nice texture depth between the base colour, the shade, then the highlight and then the extreme highlight as well or the edge highlight on the end. And the reason for that is, again, it gives it more for your eye to look at. So you're not just looking at one flat colour. Um, you know, it, it breaks it up and it makes it a little bit more pleasing and a, a little bit more rewarding when the, the paint sort of uh, works well. And again, I'm just moving on then to the next one. So the next highlight, I'm just redoing the panels because we want that little bit of the, the wash to sit between sort of the brassy area and the, uh, the red parts of the armour plating. And the reason we want that to sit there is because that will give that uh, element of depth, that shadowing between the sort of uh, two colours. And so I'm just painting that gory red back in and I'm just painting that back up because as I was saying earlier, this will dry into like a really nice shiny feel into a nice shiny effect. So it will look a lot more like sort of armour plating or like a candy red colour and it will look great. Now again, as I was saying about using a mixed colour, what I've done is I've just added a little bit of white into this um, and I'm just using uh, the very tip of the brush um, just to do a few edges. So with the armour plate in, because it's so sharp, just trying to drag the brush across just to create a little bit of a sharp edge highlight. And again, it's just about doing a few little details like this so that it breaks up that one flat colour and gives your eye a little bit more to look at. And I mean, you can be as extreme as you like with this, or you don't even have to do this if you don't want, if you're not a fan of edge highlighting or anything like that. Um, it's just a personal, personal stick. So we're building up the blue helmet next. As you can see, I've purposefully left uh, a, a line going just down the middle there. And I'm purposefully leaving little lines and little bits like this just to create a bit more depth to the helmet so that it's, again, not one flat colour. I mean, you can add a little bit of weathering or scratches to it as well if you want. You know, use a very, very thin layer of silver and just create a few scratches across the helmet as well just to create a bit more character if you like. Um, but that's all optional. That's all something that you can look at doing a little bit later and, and, and building your painting a little bit further. Doing the same thing again with the khaki, so just going back into that little tab and that little bit of cloth that he's got and just building up where that khaki is sitting, look, and just trying to leave a few of those lines, a few little bits, um, a few little bits where it's dark just so that it creates more depth to the, uh, to the, the, the cloth so that it's not looking too dark, it's not looking too light. It's just about building those layers, building those layers. And I'll show you again just on the towel at the back here, so just using that khaki, running that across. The higher edges where the light would sit and just creating a little bit more of a highlight so that then it's got more depth you see with the shade it's just sat in those recessed areas just like that and there you go it's as simple as that 
once we've done the khaki, we just go back into the bone white and just highlight in the skulls and the bone areas. Again, don't forget that I've done the teeth in this color as well, so I'm just going to highlight the teeth using the same thing. You can push this further as well using uh, probably my favorite highlight the bone white is an elfic flesh from Vallejo. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll be familiar with me building those colors up um, until eventually going to like an extreme sort of highlight of white, if you like. Um, I found on this going as far as the bone white was just about enough. I didn't need to do too much to it because this color is quite bright already on a very dark miniature with all of the dark red. We didn't need it to be so extreme that it drew your eye away from um, the model itself, away from the red and away from all of that work that we've done on making the red look so, so good. So just take your time with this. Again, some of these bits are a little bit fiddly just across the belt here. I mean, you could paint the belt buckle silver instead, but I've opted to paint it in the same color as the other skulls, just to unify uh, and add a little bit more to the, the sort of like uh, brutal nature of the model as well. The more skulls, the better, you know. Just being careful, but try, as I was saying, to leave a little bit where the shade is just sat in those recess points and create a little bit of character, a little bit of depth. Just like so. There you go, just gently, gently building those layers and it's as easy as that. Moving on to one of my favorite things, which is just creating leather colors, you know? So we've used the um, the dark rust color across the leather straps. And from there, I'm just using leather, leather brown and I'm using very thin layers. And I'm just dragging this in a very, very sort of like scratchy motion across the leather, across the dark. And the reason for that is leather is, uh, we, we want this to look sort of like battered and worn. And you don't want to just put like one flat color on top of it. So I tend to drag this back and forth in sort of like crisscrosses and use a lot of like the very tip of the brush to sort of create a, a few like scratchy kind of effect. And this makes the leather look a little bit more worn out, a little bit more sort of like um, used and battered and worn, which is great because, you know, for me, I, I, I wouldn't like to have just a, a flat color for the leather. I like it to look really sort of like, um, you know, sort of worn and, and worn out and something that is like sort of tried and tested and battle worn, you know, this is a big sort of like a demon guy, you shouldn't have like really like nice sort of brand new lovely looking leather, you kind of want this to be a bit more of a, a, a deeper scratched out tone. So from there I'm just gonna go back and add a little bit more of that vi violet red back onto the veins. Um, you can highlight this further if you want. Now I did try this myself and I did actually take it back um, because the violet red sits perfectly with the red and when you start highlighting into like a pink color again it detracts your eye away from all of the hard work that you've done on the skin. So I prefer to keep the violet red as it is without highlighting it too much because you don't want it to take your eye away from um, how extreme the skin tone is. Now I found as well, I use uh, inks to, to get a little bit more vibrancy out of the miniatures that I paint on times. And I found that some of the inks that you can put in will add some vibrancy and add a little bit of color and texture to your model as well. So for that I'm using a uh, Dalla Roni ink here. And I'm just using this really, really bright orange color. Um, and with inks, the good thing is because they're so um, wet and so um, thin, they're quite easy easy to manipulate, especially into sort of recessed points like this. So I'm using this bright orange in the symbols of this uh, model, as you can see. And it doesn't matter if I uh, go a little bit outside of that area, because this is supposed to be sort of like seething, seething, sort of like white hot orange, hot sort of like um, rage coming through the model. So I'm just trying to put this into the, the recesses, into the gaps as much as possible. But it doesn't matter too much if we don't, you know, if, if a little bit spills over and things like that, because it adds to the roughness and the, the nastiness of the model as well, which is kind of what we're looking for. Now to highlight all of those spikes I was talking about earlier, whereas we made them a really sort of like dark gray, I'm using a pale, uh, a group, a blue-gray pale, sorry, uh, which is a lighter sort of gray color. And that's all I'm going to do is just use this to paint down the horns. And I'm just trying to create again that depth because we've used a shade on there. Um, we're going to have a darker area in the reset points, right up all the way to these edges, which we're just going to use a lighter color using this uh, blue-gray pale. This works really, really well on this color. Um, it builds up nicely and again it adds just something a little bit different for your eyes to look at um, without detracting from the miniature. 
Now one of the toughest uh, parts to do here is uh, just dry brushing the chains. This is something you don't have to do if you don't want. Um, if you do, just be very, very careful. Try to use a very small dry brush because you don't want to get any of this dry brush or any of this silver on the red that we've worked for. I'm using a plate mail metal here and I'm just gently dry brushing. And then as a highlight dry brush, then I'm going on to shine and silver. Uh, both are army painter paints. Uh, again, this is uh, an optional area because dry brushing can be quite messy, it's not perfect and you might in turn get some silver on your miniature, so you might have to tidy up a little bit afterwards. But again, that's completely up to you, you don't have to do that, that's an optional thing. And then one of the final areas then, I'm just going to go back just using that brassy brass that we used originally, and I'm just touching that brass back up to a lighter standard. Because we've used the null and oil wash across this miniature this has helped to darken uh, some of the bits down including some of our metals so i'm just using this brassy brass now just to build that color back up and get a little bit more of that brass tone coming through because with the true metal metallics they should have a little bit of shine in a little bit of um a little bit more color a little bit more vibrancy to them so that's all we're doing is we're just going back around as you see and i'm just trying to avoid areas where like on the rivets where sort of the shade and things like that would have just sat. So just trying to create a bit more depth between sort of like the lighter brass and the darker brass and things like that. You can push this further if you want by mixing a little bit of gold in as well, but you don't have to. Um, I didn't and the model still looks amazing. So you don't have to, but if you do want to highlight it a little bit further, just add a tiny little bit of gold into it. Maybe like a Retributor armor from Citadel would be perfect and that would create a great tone. This is my model all finished. Um, this has been a really, really long video and I really hope that you've enjoyed the video. Sorry that I talk a lot um, when I'm going through things, but I just think that there's a lot of different things that need to be explained. Um, you have to let me know in the comments below just how much you like, uh, just, just if you like the red and how awesome that red has come out. Um, it is a bit that takes a lot of time, but stick with it, have the patience. Uh, as always though, uh, thank you so, so much for tuning in and watching my video. Thank you.